Greetings people, it's Mr. Poo the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So, putting into light or into consideration the recent apology that was given by Omoto's daughter, Grace. Uh, you know, forgiving her, it's, uh, it's, it's unconditional. We just have to, go to forgive her and allow her to be. But us making peace with her is contingent upon different factors. There are so many things that are required of her before we can consider her neutral or before she can try to distance herself from this case of baby testimony. Because this case is hot, hot. One thing I can tell you, one thing I can assure you, this case is hot, hot. It's not just the spirit of baby testimony that is tormenting them. But they know these people, they are going to be held accountable for everything that they've said, everything they've done, and, every, and their silence alone is enough to hold them accountable. So we can forgive grace. Yes, we don't have the option not to. But she remains accountable. She still has to be held accountable for everything she has said and everything she has done. No one is walking away free from this case of baby testimony. Everyone who got their mouth into it, everyone who got their hands onto it, everyone who had anything to say about it, they have to finish what they started. They can choose to take a break but we will forever hold them on a very tight leash. For they are still supposed to answer to the law. Because the case we are talking about here is not a scandal. It's not one of Suleiman's scandals of having slept with different celebrities in Nigeria that can be talked about and laughed about and it flies away, disappears into thin air. No, 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 no. This is a case of a child. Who was abducted at church and the church did nothing about it the overseer of the church and his administration and his security team chased the woman out of their premises the woman who had lost the child the woman who had her child kidnapped do you people understand Africans Nigerians do you people understand how sensitive this case is or how important kids are or children are or the disabled. It's only in Africa or particularly in Nigeria where kids can be abducted and the state does nothing about it. The society does nothing about it. It just becomes a trending story for a day or two and tomorrow people continue life as usual. They continue business as usual. Go to European countries. Let them declare a child missing. They'll put everything on standby. Everything has to be stopped. This becomes a priority for the state, not just the state, for everyone. They'll employ all the resources to make sure that they trace, they track, they bring to question everyone who can lead to valuable information concerning the disappearance of that child. But in worry, a child was abducted. A child was kidnapped. The police was informed. They did nothing about it. The church drove away the woman out of their premises. The church started accusing the woman of being the one responsible for selling her own child. The police started prosecuting and actually blaming and accusing the woman of alleging or falsely accusing or of defaming the church where the child was abducted. The prophet who happens to be the overseer of the church where the child was abducted. That is in Wari. That is in Nigeria. An entire child goes missing and nothing gets to be done about it. Humanitarian organizations, the barricade, got involved into it. Along the way, they dropped the entire case. And they continued with businesses as, as usual, as if nothing ever happened. 
How did we get here as a people? How did we lose our conscience? Our zeal to fight for humanity? How did we got our priorities mixed up? How did this become a normal? How did this become acceptable? How did we become so damaged like that? Even up to date with people that are still coming and trying to make this case seem as if it's light. They make a joke out of it. How is that even possible? How did you people become like this? I know there are so many institutions in Nigeria. Can I, can I just tell you something? This case of baby testimony. Do you know how many lawyers we've approached and they've dropped this case? They are afraid. Don't ever think these people do not know what we are talking about. No, no, don't, don't ever think humanitarian organizations in Nigeria do not know about this case of baby testimony. Don't ever think the prophets, the, the, the GOs, all these charlatans in Nigeria do not know about this case of baby testimony. Don't ever think they know it. They are fully aware of it in detail. They are forever consuming the episodes of the Enlightenment series concerning baby testimony. Your the DGOs, your prophets, they are forever here consuming. They know that their counterpart, or motor for fame, did something, is hiding something. But they will never come out to condemn him. They will never come out to rebuke him. They will never come out in the public to talk about it. And these are the people you call your leaders. These are the people you call your DGOs, your spiritual fathers. These are the people you bow down to, you expect them to actually anoint you, lay their filthy dead hands on your heads. And you expect something, some transformation to come into your life. When they can observe this kind of inhumane activities, operations, when they can remain silent in cases of injustice, when they can keep their hands folded when a child went missing, they don't talk about it, they don't raise an alarm. Because Omoto is their own. They know if they talk about it, their own can be exposed. Or chances are they are also involved in the very same line of business. Because it is a business to them. There are so many you know, issues. There are so many connected events that can make people, even those people that do not want to believe that Omoto has something to do with it. Omoto is known for recruiting these young kids. Omoto is known for adopting these young kids. And he grooms them and trains them to become prophets, young false prophets. Not only that, there are so many other cases of missing children, children passing away at his crusades, even at his shrine. There are cases of that nature which have shown a pattern that this case of baby testimony is not one of its kind. It's not the first time this is happening. But they do not choose to question all those things. Even the commissioner of police pays a blind eye to all these connected events that can help them actually do a thorough investigation or bring a motor for fame in Mercy City to question. Because this institution called Mercy City, this gentleman called a motor for fame, has suddenly become a threat to humanity. If they can do this to a disabled woman like Ruth Matthew, if they can do this to baby testimony, two and a half year old kid, what more can they do to other people that do not have any deformities, to other people that do not have any vulnerabilities? And the reason why the commissioner does not question all these things the reason why law enforcement agencies in Nigeria do not question all these things is not because they do not know that these things are happening at Mercy City. The very first time Ruth Matthew went to make a report about this, she was told that this is not the first time. This has been happening. I'm going to be more light on the other cases of children passing away at Mercy City, not just at Mercy City, but in different crusades that Omoto has done, I will be more light on those. Maybe in the next one of the episodes to come so that you can also understand that this has been a pattern. For us to actually now raise much awareness on the case of baby testimony, it means these operations have been taking place for long. 
And these cases of children missing in Nigeria, they are very, very, very common. And you know it for a fact. But now what breaks our heart is, how can this be happening at church? And whenever these cases are reported to the police, the police don't do anything about it. Yet they do know that these things are happening. So this just means that there is some money that is being exchanged. There is some bribing that is being done behind the scenes to counter any publication that will expose these operations happening at Mercy City. That's just what it means. So that's just the gravity or the intensity of this case of baby testimony. It has so many eyes watching it. Everyone is just waiting for the outcome. Everyone is just patiently waiting, curiously waiting for the outcome. And everyone is waiting to celebrate because one way or the other, baby testimony will be released. I don't care when or how, but baby testimony will be released. They can take all the time that they need, but at the end, baby testimony will be released. If it means everyone has to be put behind bars, everyone connected to Omoto has to be put behind bars for the truth to, su to surface, then let it be. So shall it be. So now when we have the likes of Grace coming out to apologize, even though she tried to generalize almost everything, as if she's just addressing people at, at random over a case that is not direct, we all know that the main reason why she's apologizing is she's trying to run away from something. She's trying to make herself immune from something. But like I said, we forgive grace. And we are forgiven. But the forgiveness is contingent upon certain requirements. Grace still needs to be brought to book. Grace still needs to answer for everything that she has been saying. For the insults that she has been leveling towards Ruth Matthew and her family. For the threats that she has been leveling towards Ruth Matthew and her family. All those things, they constitute criminal offenses. She will never walk away from this free. And she has to explain to the world, she has to tell the world what she knows about baby testimony, about how baby testimony was taken from Mercy City. She has to come out clean. The apology or the confession, it has to be comprehensive. It's not just going to be a generalized one, whereby it just seems like she's just addressing the general public. Whereby it just seems like she's just addressing, you know, a povo. People of valueless opinions. No. She has to come out direct and tell the world what she knows about baby testimony. This is not only just going to be for her. Everyone. Grace alone is enough evidence to implicate Jeremiah Omoto for fame. Regardless of the apology that she gave, she is enough exhibit that Mercy City and Jeremiah Omoto for fame know something about the, this abduction syndicate. She has something that she knows that she might not be openly uh, free to come out to air and talk about, but eventually she will still be put to stand and answer and explain what she knows. Because she said a lot of things which cannot just be washed away and thrown away as if she never said it. Not only Grace, Doris Ogala has so many other things, so many things to answer to. Ogala will be brought to book. It's only a matter of time, my people. It's only a matter of time. Ogala played a big role in obstructing baby testimonies justice. She knows in everything she knows She'll be brought to book for it and she'll answer for it. Because obstructing justice is a criminal offense. Impersonation is a criminal offense. Everything that she did in the custody of Ruth Metto, it's a criminal offense.
allowing yourself to be used by Jeremiah or Moto and Chris Okafo to do damage control for Moto for fame. It's a criminal offense. This is a case of a missing child. You do not play like that just because you want to get paid. You don't. She will dance to the music. Together with her Canadian YouTube doctor boyfriend, Chidi, this one that has lost credibility, you still have to answer for the damage control that it did. The good thing about it, they are all Nigerians. So it's very easy to call these ones to, you know, to, to order or to come to appear in court for everything that they've said and everything that they've done to try as if they want to fight for baby testimonies justice, yet they are obstructing justice for everything that they've ever said. The records are there and they will answer for it. Your Izang, Solomon Izang, this Nigerian 419, it's very easy for these ones to be extradited to Nigeria to answer for all the things that they claim. They even did episodes saying that baby testimony is the biological son of Ruth Matthew and Jeremiah Omoto for fame. And there's a reason why they do all those useless episodes, just so that they can distract people's attention, just so that they can delay baby testimony's justice. They even came to clear out Jeremiah Omoto for fame, that Jeremiah Omoto for fame has nothing to do with the case of baby testimony. They'll all be brought to book. They'll all have to answer. Emmanuel Marcus, the one who stole Ruth Matthew's phone, and Bankard obstructed justice. He did so much to obstruct baby testimonies justice. If he had not stolen this 70,000 from Ruth Matthews Bankard, a publication could have made. And some people could have come out to tell us what they know or what they witnessed about how baby testimony was abducted. These are major key players in this whole abduction syndicate, with the likes of Emmanuel Marcus, they will never walk free. Their apologies will be accepted, but they will never walk away free. Impossible. We have your Juliet Matthew. Juliet Matthew was actually seen talking with these two specific women who ended up abducting baby testimony. She will have to be brought in for questioning. She will have to answer. She will have to tell us where baby testimony is. All the people that have been used by Jeremiah Omoto, from the three witnesses, the Joy Idole, the ones who owns the hotel, the fact that she allowed herself to be used to come in as a complainant or as a witness or claim that Ruth Matthew falsely accused her, yet Ruth Matthew didn't. She will be brought for questioning and she will have to answer. And they will all have to tell us what they know. The head of security at Mercy City, they have to be people the way this thing is going to go down, how this shrine is going to collapse, and how these people are going to dance to the music, it's only a matter of time. Just allow time to take charge. The head of security is guilty as charged. The ones in charge of the CCTV footages, or even the CCTV company that installed CCTV surveillances, which a motto claims they were not functioning. They will have to, you know, to be served with papers. They will have to answer. They will have to be picked up and explain to us if, if indeed the CCTV surveillances were not working and explain to us why they were not working. What was the cause of the malfunction of those two specific CCTV surveillance cameras on this specific day and why those only two which were covering the area where these two anonymous women abducted baby testimony and the one which was covering the entrance, they will have to be subpoenaed and they will have to explain to us why only two were not working. There's literally no way out of this entire case. Absolutely no way out. All the Egada, the, the, the this campaigning governor, is it a beggar? Yeah, it's a beggar. His political career has just come to an end before it even started. Just because he wanted a quick buck from Jeremiah Omoto for fame, he's going to be disgraced. And all the sales for all these people, they are already ready. They are being warmed up. For they thought we were, we were, we were just kidding. They thought we were playing. When the time comes, they will know 
that next time when a child goes missing, you stay away from it. All these useless bloggers that come saying, stop accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame, the Mickey Mouses. <laughs> Their youth will be ruined, will be disrupted. Because the fact that they came out to, to defend what they don't know, it means they know something that we do not know. Or they are paid to obstruct justice. Their day is coming. And they will dance to the music. Omoto for fame himself in the Mercy City Shrine, it, it, if it means operations at Mercy City have to be suspended, then they will be until the environment is safe for conducting you know, public activities or public functions. For now, if those that are still risking going to Mercy City, they're doing it at their own peril, but that environment is not safe until we've proven, until they have proven or they have you know, uh, put in place risk mitigating tools or elements that can prevent such things of kidnaps and abductions from taking place. Those are things that should have been instituted long time ago when baby Tesman was abducted. And Omoto for Fane himself, we all know. We all know what's going to happen at the end of the day. You know, we know. He can run, but he can't hide. He can pay off people. But he cannot pay off everyone. He can get one or two arrested, but he cannot get everyone arrested. A day is coming when they have to release this boy under harsh conditions. So as for the apology, this is my message to Grace. Your apology was accepted, but it was not complete. Comes the apology and then the confession. What do you know about baby testimony? Let the whole world know. You can't save yourself from this sinking ship. The truth is, it's very much too late for you to distance yourself from this. It's very much late for you to walk away from this. You're already in it, my sister. And for asking for forgiveness, we commend you for that. You did a very good thing, a very noble thing. But you need to finish up what you started. You need to let the, the world know what you have been covering up. Because at the end of the day, you wouldn't want to go down together with the motto for fame. There's always an exception that can be made for the people that spilled the beans. It's not you, it's not backstabbing. You're not betraying, you will not be betraying anyone. You'll just be speaking the truth that you know. And the truth that you know will set you free. What do you know, Grace? What do you know? The sooner you come up front and let the whole world know the role that you played, reveal to the world what you know. That might get you exempted, but it does not give you freedom. You never have peace, grace, until you rectify the damage that you caused. You never know peace in your life until you do this right thing for baby testimony, for the sake of baby testimony. As a mother that you are, you have to make right, you have to make peace with the wrongs, with the atrocities that you've caused to a fellow woman, to baby testimony, to Ruth Matthew and her family. Not until, unless you come out clean, your forgiveness, it was just a sign of admission of guilty, but the confession is, will be the last nail on the coffin. That can actually make us maybe think of pardoning you. But at the end of the day, the law has to take its course. And by now, I'm sure you already know that the entire syndicate is going down. So distancing yourself might be a strategy to keep yourself out of it, but you can't now. 
Justice at the end of the day, it has to be served. And I just hope, I only hope that you actually did not participate in this syndicate. I only hope that you were just, you know, committing these felonies in ignorance. So do tell the world what you know and make a full confession. And with that being said, I'll check you out, people, on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. It's Mr. Paul the Trigger. I'm out.